Hello witches, seekers, and the curious. My name is Stacy. Welcome to Enigmatic Witchcraft. Today we're going to talk about building a grounding bracelet and everything that goes into an endeavor. Um, so that includes creating a sigil, creating a mantra or a chant, deciding when to do some spell work, doing the spell work, kind of breaking down the sigil crafting. Remember, we have DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. What we're getting ready to go into here is a internal dialogue about this whole grounding bracelet and the process. If that's not really your cup of tea, go ahead and use the chapters and just go to the section that's breaking down creating the sigil. Sometimes it's hard to balance. Focus on mind sometimes becomes so intense, somehow we forget about body and spirit. Sometimes it's easy to forget that spiritual knowledge can help, not do the work for you, but help ease the journey. You just have to know where you're going. What is the goal? That's often where I find myself lost. Seeking the agreed upon goal. What was it again? I'm looking for a bracelet. Not just any bracelet. One that is heavy, clunky, loud. A grounding bracelet. A grounding bracelet that wards off reactions to PTSD triggers. The ones that result in state of mind switches, switches between self states or alters, I mean. One that allows anyone, the wearer, to remain present. How is a bracelet supposed to do that? With magic, my dear. In psychology, specifically self hypnosis, in this case, we call it trance work. In sensory usage or body work, what the body feels, thus the weight is important. This is some of that balance isn't always what people think it is stuff we talk about sometimes. Back to goals. Once you have a goal that you holistically, all of you, can get behind, write it down. Simple, clear language. One sentence if possible. Make it into a symbol that speaks to your soul. I'm talking about creating a sigil, of course. Okay, okay, wait, whoa, well, wait, wait and a minute. Here's the Back question. Up. How exactly do you agree on goals to work on with witchcraft when you are a multiple. Don't you end up sabotaging yourself with competing priorities and conflict? <laughs> to be clear, y'all, it's pretty much just the same as working with a coven. You find ways to communicate, find common ground, and focus your talents and energy towards a common goal. You take your time and be patient with everyone and you don't push anything. Yeah, you can sabotage one another. This bracelet has been sitting on our altar for over a week. We've been thinking about doing this with this bracelet for months. Waiting for the goal to be articulated in a way that made sense to all of us. Edits, tweaks here and there. You have to bring your whole self to your witchcraft practice somehow. If you can't do that, things can, things will go awry. But when you can, it's an amazing, holistic, magical wonder. Just like working in a coven, it's not easy to get a group of witches to agree to a collective goal. Ever heard the term, like herding cats? Yeah. I think they were talking about witches. 
There are competing priorities and sometimes conflict, varying skills and competencies, energies of all sorts and sizes. Holy cow, it can really be a lot. But with communication and patience, you can find common ground. And when you all can focus on one collective goal, wow, it can be a moving, tangible, magical wonder. So, Coven of Witches or DID system, the same principles of engagement apply. Okay, my curious friends, back to the sigil. It becomes the focal point in the trance work, so it also gets put on the bracelet. It's a visual cue. I chose to paint it on. I know it won't last very long. That's okay. We're testing this out. I don't know if it will work. Once I know, we can put it on the bracelet in a more permanent manner, an etching or something. The original sentence that was turned into a sigil will become the chant. We used to make everything rhyme, but with some things we found you try to get too creative at the sake of clarity, sometimes with rhyming. So you don't always have to worry about that. The clarity of purpose takes precedence over rhyming, always. Now just to determine when. When to actually do the spell work. We use a Moon Phase app. It's fast and that's nice. Okay, so I talked very briefly about what goes into um, building a sigil from our perspective. So you always want to have down what your goal is. So that succinct one-liner um, on what you want the sigil to do. And when you write that down, you only use um, the consonants, so take out the vowels, so cross out all the vowels, and then what you're left with are the consonants. Cross out any duplicates, and then create your sigil from the letters that are left, so kind of just fit them together. There's another school of thought um, of using the letters and doing the same thing, and keeping the vowels in, and obviously getting rid of any duplicates, and putting them together. Uh, to make a sigil. The third school of thought, well those, so those are methods, there's another school of thought on sigil making or crafting um, that Laura Tempest Zakroff talks about in her book. This book, I cannot recommend this book enough, it's an amazing book. Um, sigil Witchery, highly, 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 highly recommend it. Um, so in this book, it's more about symbolism, more about those symbols that speak to the collective consciousness. So for example, um, an anchor is a great symbol for, for grounding. Thus, that is the main um, focus of the sigil that I created. Uh, and so this school of thought with sigil building, creating, um, is more about that imagery and they don't, and she doesn't use the letters at all. So I do both. So I um, use all the letters, I don't take the vowels out, and I put them all together 
and I get an idea of what that looks like. And then I will redraw it um, with the symbolism in mind. Um, that's kind of refining it to, to me. Uh, so that's, that's the process there in a nutshell for how to create a sigil. And you really want to make sure that it's something that, that speaks to you and that really kind of sums up in a visual way what the goal um, of that sigil is. And then putting it somewhere where you see it regularly or on a piece of jewelry, depending on what you're creating it for. You want um, the place that it is for you or in part of your spell work. Um, all kinds of different things that you can do with sigil craft. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're a new viewer, uh, I really hope that you enjoyed the content and consider liking and subscribing if this is really the sort of thing that you are interested in. For returning viewers, thank you so much. Um, it really means a lot to us that you spend your time with us watching our videos. Thank you. Bye.